Deterritorialization and Reterritorialization The concepts of deterritorialization and reterritorialization first appear in anti oedipus which since then are the concepts most frequently used by Toulouse Gotari. The concepts of territory, territoriality, and territorialization should be added here. In terms of linguistic form, the word territory seems to be primary, but what is the most important and primary in the problematization that activates this concept is the territorialization movement. This is why they choose deterritorialization as the title in the conclusion of the Thousand Play Two, where they describe several core concepts as if they summarize them. As you guessed, the concepts of territory and territoriality originally came from ethology. A territory is a specific area for inhabiting, getting food and mating, and territoriality is the disposition to form and defend the territory, and to move from territory to territory. It is well known that dogs, wolves, and birds excrete feces or urine or use sounds or visual markers to mark their territories. Humans are more powerful in this regard. They use legal rights guaranteeing the exclusive disposal of their territories, build fences to prevent trespassing, and create gates to select those who enter and exit. They also sometimes export money from those in there. Human being is horribly territorial animal. Territorialization is turning what did not originally belong to one into one's own territory. The territorialization is living from what used to be one's territory. It is the operation of the line of flight. Reterritorialization is taking what has not been one's territory before as one's new territory. As they can't be a territory without a living movement, even when seeking a territory, paradoxically, the most primary is the territorialization. Just as the one who has never left one's hometown has no notion of hometown, there is no notion of territory without the movement to live and move. In other words, territory is the product of territorialization, and territorialization is the territorializing what has not been one's territory before. In short, territorialization is always reterritorialization. This presupposes a movement to leave the given territory, a movement of deterritorialization. Therefore, the movement of deterritorialization is more primary than territory or territorialization. The modes and intensities of these movements are associated with different lifestyles. As with animals that hunt, for example, hunters own territories where they hunt. Gatherers also own their territories. The extent of this territory is determined by how far he travels from his place of residence for hunting or gathering. In other words, the movement of the territorialization determines the size of the territory. Because for hunters and gatherers, the territory itself is not the direct object of desire or production, the extent of the territory is flexible and variable. Conflicts over territories do not occur except under special situations such as catastrophic disasters. As with animals, they live with respect for each other's territory under normal circumstances. The same is true of nomads doing livestock farming. There is no reason to secure territories because they live by migrating according to seasons and conditions. Since they only stay for another movement, even reterritorialization can be said to be part of deterritorialization. Agricultural life triggered the rapid increase of territoriality. This is because securing the condition for survival exactly equals securing territory, as the ground is both the direct object of the labor and the source of product. 
As agriculture begins, the earth not only becomes the object of labor and the register of the production factors, but it itself becomes a core asset that produces products. As the ground, as both the object of appropriation or utilization and that of possession, becomes distinguished from the earth in this way, territory becomes an important object on which human production and desire are concentrated. Securing and protecting territory becomes important, and there appears the society machine that organizes and manages arms forces. Deleuze Guattari named this territorial machine. The territorial machine is, therefore, the first form of socius, the machine of primitive inscription, the mega machine that covers the social field. On the surface of the earth, as a body without organs, the society machine, that is the complex of the giant machine, is built along the lines of deterritorialization and reterritorialization. In fact, the earth, which is the surface of the earth, is originally nobody's territory. The earth is the mother of the milieu, meaning the virtuality that will become the survival condition of someone. There is no earth unless one leaves the given milieu. There is only one's own milieu. The earth is discovered as the potential to be some other environment. Therefore, the earth appears as the earth only to the eyes of those who leave their own milieus and go somewhere. It is the territorialization that makes the earth the earth. A territory became a territory when those who left the given territory territorialized part of the earth. In other words, the earth is both the field and the prerequisite for territorialization. Territorialization is driven by the desire for survival, and is also the moment of the beginning of production. On the other hand, the earth erases the deterritorialized field of production and returns it to the surface of the earth through earthquakes, flus, etc. To put it like the expressions in Antiochus, it can be said to be a body without organs in that it is both the prerequisite of production and the field of anti-production that erases production machines. The earth is the primitive, savage unity of desire and production, for the earth is not merely the multiple and divided object of labor. It is also the unique, indivisible entity, the full body that falls back on the forces of production and appropriates them for its own as natural or divine precondition. Humans and other living things live on the surface of the body with the organs called the earth. In particular, humans draw lines on the surface of the earth, register production factors, and divide the earth in the solid form of ownership to territorialize it. In order to secure stable survival conditions, but there often occurs anti-production that erases them all. The recent climate crisis makes us wake up to realize the term anti-production that neutralizes human production capacity and returns the territorialized field of production to the surface of the earth. The concept of the territorialization, which originated from ethology, is soon extended to more general concepts of behavior and ethics. It becomes a concept that analyzes and describes not only the ritual territory on the earth, but also various movements and flows with a certain size and direction. The front leg of upright animals such as humans or monkeys, for example, become hand when they territorialize from the earth and re-territorialize on a tool. Whenever the mate of the hand changes, from a club to a hammer to chopsticks and to a pan, the movement of the territorialization and reterritorialization occurs. The movement of sexual desire that moves towards phallus in the end, after turning the various objects, and the flow of capitalist desire that moves towards money in the end, even though one can do anything because one is free from identity code 
a light showed the movement of the territorialization that returns to the one in the end. The metonymy of desire that changes objects infinitely, an individual choice called freedom, all are, in fact, a part of mere busy deterritorialization movements that are reterritorialized on new transcendent. We talked about hands and tools, but the face is related to a slightly different type of deterritorialization. The face was originally a part of the body, in that it is the surface of the head. But it is deterritorialized from the body as the facial expression created on the surface gets to have expressive power. Corresponding to the deterritorialization of the face from the head, the landscape deterritorialized from the milieu is born. The milieu is the corporeal condition of survival. Whereas the landscapes occurs when expressions can be read from the surface of the milieu. A landscape is the facialization of the milieu. Conversely, the close-up in the film treats the face as a landscape. The phrase, the face has a correlate, that is the landscape, came out in this context. As the face is deterritorialized, hands, feet, and fingers also become expression machines. When you swear with your fingers up, your finger is deterritorialized from your body and becomes an expression machine. The same goes for clothes. What protects the body from the cold or physical contact is cough, but it becomes clothes when it gets to have the expression with the use of buttons, pockets, collars, etc. The deterritorialization of the hand always has the object being deterritorialized by it. As the other side of the pair, when the hands cease to be four legs and leave the branch to pick a banana, the branch stops being part of the tree and becomes a club. It is deterritorialized from the tree and reterritorialized on a tool. As such, deterritorialization is always dual. This, of course, is also a dual reterritorialization if seen from the opposite side. As the branch becomes a club, it is reterritorialized on a tool, and as the hand uses a club, it is also reterritorialized on a tool. When writing on the ground with that club, a dual deterritorialization reterritorialization movement occurs as well. Therefore, deterritorialization and reterritorialization always proceed in pairs. There is no deterritorialization of the flows of pre-shophrenic desire that is not accompanied by global or local reterritorializations. The one is the reverse side of the other. As such, the territorialization that has been made to be reterritorialized is referred to as relative deterritorialization. This deterritorialization of the hand occurs within the stratum of the body or organism. On the other hand, the deterritorialization of the face is a spinoza system, a deterritorialization moving from the corporeal, that is the head, to the non-corporeal, that is the sign. And to put it after the fashion of a thousand platys, a deterritorialization going from the stratum of organism to that of signification or subjectification. In other words, it is a deterritorialization traversing different attributes, different strata. This kind of deterritorialization is much more intensive than that occurring within one stratum. This can be said to be an absolute deterritorialization in that it doesn't do any territorialization within the stratum to which it belonged. This is the same with the raised finger or claws. Here, it is very important to distinguish between the body and the non-body, the head and the face. The two are very different in that what controls the head is one's own body whereas what controls the face is the power, which is concerned with high and low and demands decency. The politics of body, suggested by Foucault in Discipline and Punish, 
seems to aiming at the control of the surface deterritorialized from the body rather than the, at the body itself. The power acting on the body is productive because it produces bodily ability, but the power acting on the surface of the body hardly seems to be productive because it produces expression machines disciplined to order. It may seem to be one and the same power aiming at the same goal, but there are different kinds of powers aiming at different goals. The reason the concepts of deterritorialization and reterritorialization are important is that they can traverse between the corporeal and non-corporeal or between different strata. For they can cross different attributes or different strata and hold them together in one assemblage. For example, the corporeal such as the stage, seats, and musical instruments, and the non-corporeal such as the gestures and expressions of performers or singers, melodies, and tones are held together to make the assemblage of the performers. An outstanding performer emerges when the performer holds the physical machines and the expressive machines together into one to create a distinct territorial color. Holding components with different attributes together into one is territorialization, which is to territorialize each component from disturbing corporeality or physical sound, and re-territorialize them as one's own sound. In short, it is the territorialization and re-territorialization that hold things belonging to different strata together in one assemblage. However, the deterritorialization of the face is absolute deterritorialization within a single stratum, but it is certainly not a deterritorialization that does not accompany reterritorialization. It is deterritorialization that traverses from one stratum to another, and a deterritorialization that is reterritorialized in another stratum. Therefore, the word absolute has only limited meaning and perhaps should be a sort of ironic expression. The deterritorialization of the face indeed becomes a territory that reterritorializes things with a low degree of deterritorialization. As the face becomes a landscapeified expression machine, the hand, foot, buttock, and nape of the neck also came to have expressions, and cars and cattle also are facialized. The phrase, the least deterritorialized is reterritorialized on the most deterritorialized, can be understood in this context. Saying that these two kinds of deterritorializations should not be confused, the Lusgatari's right, these relative movements should mostly certainly not be confused with the possibility of absolute deterritorialization, an absolute line of flight absolute drift. The former are stratic or interstratic, whereas the latter concern the plane of consistency and its testification. According to this, the deterritorialization of the phase belongs to relative movement because it is interstratic even though the degree of deterritorialization is high. Absolute deterritorialization in the true sense of the word is a territorialization movement that doesn't have any territory. It is a movement towards the pure virtuality, which doesn't have any territory, but at the same time is open to all territories and a movement that abstracts all forms and leads to the plane of a consistency. A movement leading to the virtuality of intensity zero and to the positive body without organs full of numerous determinabilities. They emphasize that this is not an idea or idea that doesn't exist in reality, but a movement that always exists. Absolute deterritorialization is there from the beginning, and a plane of a consistency is everywhere, always primary and always imminent. Just as the body without organs is primary and always exists at the base of all machines, the phrase, the earth, as deterritorialized, is the strict correlate of absolute deterritorialization 
and deterritorialization can be called the crater of the earth, should be understood in this context, as was the case with the description of the earth and territory quarried above from Antiochus. Oh, <laughs>